Are you ready to listen to a podcast? podcast. Here comes the Playhouse Podcast. Thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Find, subscribe, and listen. Right now I have a cousin whose daughter is old enough to be going to the middle school that I went to. It You're so me old. Really old. Crotchety. And she had up until, um, I guess, almost a month ago, the same English teacher that I had. And finding out that this woman was just canned. Short of her retirement, by the way. That's a weird way to go. You usually think you would just put your feet up and let it ride out. But isn't that how it gets? Like you get older and you're like, this is not how we did it back in the day. I'll just teach it how I've always taught it. And um, she just wasn't following the curriculum. So I think that they had to just. Don't they get a a large amount of levity here? Don't they get uh, some wiggle room in that curriculum? don't. Really? Mm -hmm. Curriculum is so, you have to follow it by the books or like the school board will get. They say you got to teach the Great Gatsby. They tell you that. They tell you exactly what you have to teach, really? and you teach it, and that's it. Like that's sometimes ba- that's you so can backwards. get creative. Sometimes, like my mom loves getting creative with her students, but you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, all right, we got to go through the motions and teach it this way. But- this is a monumental fail in the school district. Then you should tell them what the objective at the end of the semester is. Yes, and t- and let these people that are educated in education. Determine the best way to get these kids to that point. Yeah. If you're telling them on paper what they have to do before they even get in the classroom, wh- wh- what good is having a teacher then? You're just recycling the information. It's just like these tests. Let them I just creative. feel like kids should not be tested in a massive manner like what they are right now. It is so stressful. I don't have a problem with kids. that because how else do you assess their, their knowledge? You do throughout the year. If they are making improvements, you can see that. You can see that as a teacher that you're with them every single day. Now you have somebody that is telling them off. Maybe they didn't get a good night's sleep. They didn't get food in the you're morning. You're going to be tested for everything you do for the rest of your life. Everything you do, whether you're, uh, you're whether you get a job here, you're an athlete here, you get a job there, you have a profession there, every day for the rest of your life is a test. Ask if any you, teacher if they pay attention to it, by the way, and they will look at that student and say, you know what, maybe it wasn't your day. And they, they throw them a mulligan. So I'm glad that they're there right now. That's not right. But did you have a teacher that was fired? I remember I had a, a what, what did he even teach me? I didn't even focus because he was out smoking the whole time. But he would, his name was Brad. It wasn't Brad from college. It was Brad from high school. And he let us call him Brad because he was like a cool guy. But he was like the principal in Billy Madison where he'd wear like, you know what I mean? Like that's exactly like to the, to a T the build of what he looked like. And he would get it, get us going with our assignments or whatever. And then he would leave for like 25 minutes and we'd look outside and he'd be by the portables and he would be smoking and, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, how is he not fired? But I don't think I've ever heard of any teacher getting fired. Sarah said my science teacher from back in the day was a well-known alcoholic, got oh, caught no. and fired for putting a little nip in his coffee. Oh, man. Would call his students with learning disabilities failures <gasps> and threaten to kick him out of the class. Oh, that's really terrible. Uh, oh. Taylor, you have to call immediately. So I had, I had two that got canned. One... Uh, was an elementary school teacher who was there, had to be 40 years. This guy, this is the same guy we were on like a ground level, would open up his window right by his desk and blow the cigarette smoke out of there. You could hear him whoosh, fire up his lighter yeah. and fire up a cigarette in the class and then blow it out the window. <laughs> but, then, but then it was years later that I think I was at just finishing up high school that a bunch of... um. A bunch of students had, uh, I think this is Taylor right here. Hang on. Okay. Uh, Taylor, hang on a second. But a bunch of students had s- started, you could hear that the rumblings were about some inappropriate touch. Oh, no. And then I started thinking back, and this guy would always uh, hand on the back of the girls yeah. a lot, right? But it, it never was a creepy thing for me, and I probably wasn't, you know. But uh, later he ended up getting fired because of, uh, and I don't know if it was ever proven. I'm assuming it probably had to That's be. That's what my mom said. So I went to the same middle school, high school as my mom and dad did. And um, my mom had this typing teacher and he would go and he would rub up and down the back to see if the girls were wearing a bra. And it was like so obvious, like so obvious. <sighs> Creepy. I had another teacher that would, I'm telling you, like uh uh, the cheerleaders in your school, when they wear the cheerleading skirts, mm-hmm. he knew in class who were the good looking girls and who were the cheerleaders. And they all, ever you'd sit down, yeah. seating chart, here it is. Like some, <laughs> some people let you sit wherever you want. Yeah. His seating chart had the hottest chicks up front, oh, man. guaranteed every single time. Uh, Taylor, thanks for calling back. I really appreciate you being on the show. Tell us about the teacher that got fired, please. And don't use any names so, or your school name, okay? I won't. Okay. 
Nope. Um, so we had a high school health teacher, and obviously part of the health thing is sexual education. Sure. Um, and, you know, I thought at the time he was a pretty decent teacher, but he was super personable. Um, and so beforehand, he would, before we did, like, the sex education piece to get all the giggles out, he would have a scream at the top of our lungs the anatomically correct name. Oh, they do this in, um, what's the movie? The football movie, they do this. What? It's, football a, yeah. movie. it's the football movie with the auto. Varsity Man. Blues? Varsity Blues, right, right. They sit there and, and the, the girl who's, the, she's a stripper. Yeah. Right? And she makes them scream the, the names of the things over and over again. Right. Okay, so go ahead. Yep. Yep. Um, so anyways, we get through school and whatnot, and then um, a few years after graduation, he is in the paper being arrested because he had uh, a sexual relationship with a student oh. throughout pretty much the entirety of her high school career and oh. afterwards. Man, you know, more so mm-hmm. right now, you hear about the 23-year-old just finished college, got a job at a local high school, teachers, and they're blonde and tan and gorgeous, and they're getting with, like, the 18-year-olds. And I never even had one of those teachers that was no. close enough to even think about that. Not a one. I had a lot of the teachers where I was like, ooh, I'd rather hook up with your daughter than you. You know what I mean? Like, I just... It, and more times than not, it's the yeah. dudes you hear about that uh, are having these inappropriate these relationships. These women are like, but they're 18. It's like, you didn't get that memo, like... You can't, but... Now, uh, does he uh, still live in your hometown? Do you ever see him at, like, the bar or the grocery store or anything? No, I think he... You got to get out of Dodge, I, right? I know. I, yeah. yeah. And then you get a name change and still hope that you can teach somewhere else again, right? You'll never be oh, able gross, to teach Oh, absolutely not. All right, all right. Well, hey, Editor. Thanks for sharing with us. <laughs> thanks for saying that. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, William, uh, where uh, where did, was this happening? This had to do with school where? This was in New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. I was on the school bus the very first time I rode the school bus, and the bus driver flipped the bus on its side. Oh, my God. So it wasn't a teacher. It was a bus driver. Right. What was going on with her? She was just uh, too busy look at watching the kids. Funny thing is, years later, I was engaged to her daughter. <laughs> what a small world. I, I feel like this is only in Louisiana type of story. You were on the bus, by the way, that got flipped, or you, or you just knew about it? There were, 23, there were 23 of us on the bus. Anybody get hurt? Yeah, the bus driver and the two students in the front seat. Oh That's terrible. Like, really badly hurt, or was it something they could walk off? Just stitches. Stitches, they walked it off. Oh, okay. But you, you survived the bus enough, the bus flip over enough to later fornicate with the bus driver's daughter. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Like a happy ending. <laughs> How's Amy doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Great. Thanks for asking. We were talking about uh, teachers that got fired. And I know this time of the year, uh, we're supposed to be appreciating our teachers. Not that we're not, but there's some sensational stories about when you look back at <laughs> grade school or high school, that teacher that got canned. Kat just found out that one of her middle school teachers got bounced because she wouldn't follow the curriculum like right before retirement. Yeah, she didn't like hit a kid or get with a kid or anything like that. She was just like, I'm over this nonsense. I'm tired of teaching leaves of grass. <laughs> we are going to focus on what I've always taught. So I just felt bad that she, right before she got her retirement, by the way. How about the really teacher, bad. Amy? What'd they do? Um, so it was a religions teacher. Okay. And they got arrested for prostitution. <gasps> Like they were soliciting unclear. or they were being the prostitute? Unclear. Unclear. So No one really knows because we couldn't, if we got, talk, uh, got caught talking about it, we got detention and stuff. So they like, yeah. Okay. Oh, now, but okay. First off, let's start here. Was it a man or a woman? Man. So you think it was probably soliciting prostitution? Probably, but the way it sounded, because the way the article that we looked up, obviously, and read um, sounded like he was the prostitute. So I don't know. This has got to be the most horrible part of a principal or administration's job is to have this happen, then try and figure out a way to talk to the kids about it without... Oh, I can't Damage even control would be the worst. And then, you know, you have to explain it to the parents. Like, we did do background checks and didn't know anything about it. And what what's the deal now? Background you, check doesn't stop a guy from doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But. Yeah. And and what what uh, what did he teach? Do you, uh, not, you know, I don't even want to get too deep into this. Never mind. But you weren't uh, sure. He taught, what, 
Religion, no, religion is that what you said? That's what. Uh, yeah, so that's so this weird. was in uh, Virginia, Virginia State. Oh, okay. So it's it quite a ways away. And uh, and this is a teacher yeah. that you had. Yes. Would have you thought this is a good teacher? I wouldn't mind my kids having this person as a teacher before you found out about. Or that? were there moments where you're like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, things are now adding up. Well, he was like, he tried to be like that cool teacher. You yeah, know? sure. So like he brought his guitar to school and he had like songs and stuff and like he was fine. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my favorite, but. Yeah, you know, I can play more music at my house. Come on over. I'm my head's cool just spinning. Teacher. I'm trying yeah, to figure right. out how if this guy was standing on the corner on a Friday night or if he had an ad out on Craigslist or. Yeah. I've probably, always- probably. I, I moved from, it was a pretty big city, like, um. Uh, St. Cloud sort of big okay. um, in Virginia. So it like wasn't uncommon if you went downtown to find uh, what you needed to find. You know? sure. So I wouldn't even know where to find a prostitute. I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm pretty resourceful. I think I'd be too nervous. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> it does make all- me want to sing though. Don't, don't cry. cry. <laughs> all right, all right. No, we're good. Don't. We're good. Thanks, Amy. Have a great morning. They don't shed you too. Don't, don't cry. cry. <laughs> this is called Leave It in 2022. Okay. You get to have one thing that you want left in 2022. I don't want you to limit me to one. You get one. I have five. Jeez. So for me, and I thought long and hard about this. And I thought, what makes my blood pressure rise more than anything else? Other than meetings that are unnecessary. Mm -hmm. It's when I hear adults do baby talk. Like, who are they talking to? I don't know, but... I've ever heard that. I I hear it in the building. I hear it in the building. And it's it's never dudes, by the way. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's never guys. Hi. Oh. (laughs) You have to stop adult baby talking. It has to stop. When we flip the calendar into 2023, adult baby talking can no longer happen. I think using the word adulting after the age of 18 should not happen either. Great. You paid your bills. There's like a 41-year-old woman that I come in contact with too much. And she's like, oh, I did some adulting today. I did the laundry. I'm like, well, congratulations. You should have been doing that for decades. I did that before I was an adult. Yeah. All right, so give me at least one of your five then, Kat. Okay, I'll give you my five. Um, (laughs) The the appropriateness of talking politics, I'm over it. I'm over it. It's not appropriate. Uh, You shouldn't even talk about it with your spouse. It's boring. It's so boring. And even if you think you're saying something interesting, you're not. And you probably don't have the right information anyways. You probably because don't. You read it on Twitter or Facebook doesn't make it right. You have to understand and that. And then if two of you are talking, I mean, it's just like you belong in a circus. It's weird. Who's the dumber goat? Yeah, exactly. Is what it is. Next one. Uh, ugly, huge butt pants on young girls who have killer <laughs> bodies. You guys, knock it off. Get some cute hip hugger jeans. Like, get with it. You will not have that body forever. The next one is butterboards. Get them out of here. Butterboards. They are, yeah, it's like the new trend where oh, you load but butter stuff, yeah. onto a board yeah. <laughs> and then people just like eat all the butter. And before you know it, you had like four sticks of butter and that's not healthy. Uh, next one is singing your order at a drive through I'm over it. It's not cute anymore. Most First guy that did know. it, that was fun. And then the last one is van life. I mean, van life. It looks cool. Van life. Like living out of your van? Yes. And then they give you tours of their day. Like, oh, I wake up to a new... Do these people have jobs? To a new mountain scene every single day. I'm going to do yoga. Here's my dog frolicking on the beach. I'm going to have some yogurt Wait, and then I'm going to make my why bed. Why are you hating on this? Because they just look like a smell. <laughs> so those are my five things. Don't ask me if you don't want my opinion, but I'm just saying if those could go away, if you had my 2023 is going to be fantastic. We're asking our listeners to narrow it down. You have to take one cat. So mine is adult baby talk. If we make the list, oh God. you have to leave it in 2022. What's on your list? I'm going to say the most important is the not talking politics because I'm serious. You just sound dumb. It is now time for my favorite thing we do in the playhouse. Drunk adult or little kid, not just because there's no way of knowing before you tell us whether you were drunk adult or little kid when you did this, but I don't like this because it's alarming how many people do things that only can be explained by having a seven year old. This is 90% of my memories from the age of two to 42 
were either drunk adults or little kid memories. When I explain them to people, I don't tell them how old I was when I did it, and I try and make them guess how old. So that's basically here the deal. You tell us what you did, and Kat's going to try and figure out if you did this as a drunk adult or a little kid. My man Thad is first, and sadly I've done this as well. So please tell Kat what you did. I, uh, I got caught doing an upper decker in my neighbor's bathroom. Okay, now was Thad a drunk adult or a little kid when he decided to upper decker his neighbor and get caught. I think I would be naive in thinking that you're the only person that does this stuff. I'm going to say an adult. Thad, drunk adult, a little kid, buddy. I was a drunk adult. Yep. I hated my neighbor, but he didn't know it. He was having a party one night, so I wandered over and headed to his master bathroom. That's when I performed the upper decker. <laughs> His girlfriend at the time walked in and caught me. <laughs> I eventually moved because every time I took out my garbage, she tried to beat my ass. <laughs> disgusting. Why are there certain things where you come to mind when I hear certain things? Because like they're funny. Uh, Darcy, tell us the situation here. We know this has to do with your brother, right? I branded my brother with a butter knife. She branded him with a butter knife. So that means you had to get it hot enough to brand him with a butter knife. Drunk adult or little kid here for Darcy? I'm going to say little kid. It was an accident. Darcy, accident or not, drunk adults or little kid? I was a little kid. <laughs> he saw yeah. this in a movie and thought it was badass, so he insisted I do this. Okay. And I just figured his arm pretty fast, and we had to go to the emergency room. Oh. And 30 years later, that amazing scar is still, still a hot topic of conversation. I love it. You bring it up every time. Uh, so we've got two more for you to figure out, Cat. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to decide which one goes first next. Okay. Farting on a dentist or being run over by a cow. Hold on to your thoughts. All right. <laughs> Time for Drunk Adults or Little Kid. Round two is going to bring us some fun stuff. We know that we're either going to have to do the dentist one or the cow one first, Cat. Which would you like to go with? Kim has the dentist story. Tony's got the cow story. Um, I'm pretty curious about that cow. Me too. All Tony, right. tell us about it. We're going to try and figure out whether you did this as a drunk adult or a little kid. Bottom line it for us. I got ran over by a cow. Simple enough. Okay. <laughs> ran over by a cow. Story. That's all you're getting. No details. I'm going to say, and I'm uh, I'm batting 100 right now. 1,000. 1,000 right now. A lot of bats. I'm going to say a kid. Tony, drunk adults, a little kid. You got run over by a cow. I was a little kid. This cow yeah. we had on the farm hated me. One day, for no reason at all, the cow speared me into the side of this wall, and okay. I ended up breaking my thumb. Believe it or not, cows can be vicious monsters. They are, and I'll, I'll tell you this. I spent enough summers on my on my uncle's farm that livestock can learn to either love you or hate you. And, and it, it's never no reason, okay? I don't want to hear no reason because you went over a barricade or opened a door to get into where they are. It can be as simple as getting their feeding times off, though. Mm. I if they're don't if they're that. used to getting silage at a certain time and they're not getting it, I'm telling you, they will turn ornery. That's all they have in their life. They eat, they poop, they wander around. They eat, they poop, they wander stay around. Away from they them. wait they to don't breed. Want you. They eat, they poop, they wander around. They breed a little. They eat, they poop, they wander around. It's what like a you. Life. The, it's like you on the week between Christmas <laughs> yeah. and New Year's. What a life! Uh, one last one, Kimberly. Help us out. We know it has to do with the dentist. So first, give it to us. We're gonna get uh, a drunk adult, a little kid, throw at you. I farted in the dentist chair and I got yelled at. Oh, you got yelled at for wow. passing gas. Sometimes wow. you can't. Uh, it's a hygienic it environment. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, a drunk adult. I would have went drunk adult on this too, but then I'm thinking, who goes to the dentist drunk? So Kim, drunk adult or little kid? I was a little kid. I hated going to the dentist, and it would give me horrible anxiety and a violent tummy. So while he was cleaning my teeth, I clenched up and pushed out the loudest and stinkiest fart ever. He got so mad at me. He yeah. said, I thought I was the one who administered gas. He said he excused himself and left the room for five minutes. I was oh, still blushing by the time he returned. Yeah, I would. you got to let that air out. I'm having deja vu. I feel like the last time we did this, we had a listener call in that went to the dentist. Drunk. drunk you're right. We did. Yeah. And you said that same thing. Who would, <laughs> go, to the dentist who would drunk? go to the dentist drunk? But she did. Fair enough, guys. Thank you. It is now time for one of the world's greatest radio games. Cat and JJ in the Playhouse present Rock, Paper, Scissors. Melissa, you're the only one. Yeah. Who could possibly be called upon at this time of need for the earth to dethrone Cat, <laughs> a raging, raging evil queen 
I'm right here. Of rock, paper, scissors. Now, Melissa, what gives you the impression, based on your life and your skill set, that you could handle beating her in a game of rock, paper, scissors for the championship of the world? Five children. <laughs> That's it. That's how you decide things with all five kids. All right, let's oh, go. She's rock, got paper, through scissors. five kids. This is a breeze. So. I think that you have the advantage, too, because I have tech thumb going on right now. It hurts so badly. I Did can't you hear even about tell this? you. Did you hear her the other day when she was complaining about this? I have now she had scroll- to switch to my pointer finger she to scroll She scrolls scroll on her phone so much that she's injured her thumb. <laughs> it hurts so, so bad. What I hear you saying is you're going to pick scissors because you can't bend your finger. Got it. Oh, you shouldn't have said it out loud. Now she's going to throw you a curveball. So it's very simple, Melissa. Yeah. Uh, I will I, I will say one, two, three, shoot, and then you each throw down either your rock, your paper, or scissors. First one to two wins the championship. Are you I barely hold my cup? She's trying to drink orange juice and she's squinty. She goes, Oh, it hurts so bad because legit hurts. I have tech thumb. Oh my help. god. All right, first round. Melissa, good luck. This is for the championship of the world. Cat and Melissa. One, okay, two, three. I got a question, oh though. my Jeez. god. Is one, two. <laughs> is it one, two, three? We say it, or one, two, and then we say it. One, two, three, shoot. And then you say it. Okay. Come. You ready now? Here we go. Shoot. No. One. (laughs) Both of you are so on my nerves right now. I'm going to hang up on Melissa. I'm going to shut Cat's microphone off. I'm going to do the show by the rest of the No more red meat for you. You're losing. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. Scissors. Paper. Yes. Melissa. You didn't win. That's Mo- not right. Melissa. Scissors cut Come paper. On. Melissa. Come on. Hey. I knew it. I, I'm sure you did. You got to just take a small pause. If you just pause for a second, she'll say what hers is, and then you'll be able to beat her, okay? Okay. Here we go. Melissa, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I feel like I'm really rowing against the current this morning. Round two. One, two, three, shoot. Paper. Rock. <laughs> no, I win. You're, oh, you're wait, wait, idiot. you did wrong. You literally don't know the game. Oh, my God. I, I hit the wrong button. I, it's not my... I was playing my four-year-old, and I felt bad for your finger, so I gave it Oh, to that's you. why. Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. So you purposely... Do you, even, you don't you want to win. Purposely called and then failed and then said it was because you felt bad for her? <laughs> Because I felt bad the other day when she was complaining about her finger, and now it's worse, and the orange juice isn't even working. Yeah, nope. Um, so can should you, we just call it a loss? Can you, you want yeah, me to? No, no, she lost. Yeah, Melissa, I, I have to say goodbye. It's, the, it's the only the right thing. But I feel I feel so bad for anyone who's just joining our program for the first time in the last couple of minutes. They're like, oh, hey, I stumbled across this. What's going on? Well, <laughs> <laughs> nothing except for the girl what? has got a hurt finger, and everybody feels bad. Can we for Can we try her, one so. more here? Oh, or no. sure, sure. One, two, three, shoot. Paper. Rock. Oh, my oh, God. Melissa. Are you serious? <laughs> Melissa, I'm Melissa. mad now. Okay. now, now <laughs> I did not want to get Listen, mad. You don't have to go home. You have to get <laughs> up out of here, though. So I do have to say goodbye, Melissa. Thank you for your compassion, your empathy. Tell us about your tech thumb a little more, please. I, I'm, uh, I, I thought you were done with this last week. I thought you would put it to rest. And now you're scrolling. You thought it magically went away? Well, I thought you would just. I thought here's what happens. If I hurt myself at the gym, then I don't do that exercise for a long time. And apparently, you continued to scroll with your finger, and now it's even worse. Yes. I've done research as to how to heal a tech thumb. How do you how do you heal it? Then? I have to take some anti-inflammatories. Somebody had called last week and said, get those eject- injections. What what injection was it? Like a PRP? Like You, want pl- you, you don't no. want plasma for that. No, what was it? I, I don't you know. Don't remember what I you don't said? remember, but I, I just think it's bananas that you have a tech Oh, it was a steroid injection. Shut up. If pain persists. I'm telling you, this is so painful. Like holding my mouse like this, I have to like hold it a different way. And I can't possibly. I did this do we even job have left-handed with mice? a broken neck. That was so preventable. This is not preventable. This oh, is you life. You did it yourself. I move my thumb you all the time. so much. You're on your phone so much that you now might not be not, able to do your job. No, it, it it is not because I'm on my phone so much. You're on your phone right now. I am showing you how I navigate my phone now with this finger. You have Look a problem. Oh, my God. I really thought it was kind of a jokey thing when he had it at first. I can't believe you're talking to me about this. You literally can't go four minutes without grabbing your phone. So, But I don't have a problem. But you That is a problem. If you can't stop touching your phone, that's a problem. You have a problem. It's affected your life to the point where you can't do your primary job. 
have I you're have just the saying, show you're suffered? Just, am just, I somewhere that I am? You're just saying that you can't even move the mouse for your computer. I'm managing. Poorly. But I am doing my research. Guys, I have to get this taken care of. She's gritting her teeth as she tries to move the computer mouse. The you easiest can tell thing. it's inflamed. Like, it doesn't feel good. And then I'll pop it out. Like, I'll pop it out of the socket, and then it'll feel good for a second. And then it'll go back. It's like this nagging pain. <laughs> so I got to figure out what these injections are, where to go. <sighs> and I got to do it now. So, Anybody else got the tech thumb? I would love to. I would love to start a small support group for Cat right now. More severe cases need surgery. I can't possibly do that. I can't do down. I'm trying to find a time to get my boobs done, and I can't even get them done at the same time. (laughs) Hey, Doc, while you're there, (laughs) while you're in here, while you're in here, (laughs) I feel like everybody offers something valuable to the public. If you have a bit of knowledge, what is one thing that you feel you could teach somebody? And it would make their life better. I'd throw a pretty good curveball. <sighs> that wouldn't make my life better. It could. How do you not know? I, I could teach you. I, I could teach you how to juggle too. Um, that's great for parties. I think parties. that that would be good that's, at like a bar. That's great for parties and just getting together. If I mean, how often do you find yourself with three balls in your hand, anyways? <laughs> and, uh, I have a text <laughs> from Lisa. Lisa said I could teach somebody how to change a tire. Lisa, oh. that is invaluable. Yeah. I have changed my tire. Uh, tires, one of my tires, 10 times in my life. One of the very first years Kat and I are doing the show, <laughs> yeah. uh, we come back from our Thanksgiving break and I go, Hey, how was Thanksgiving break? I was on my way home. It was snowing. <laughs> my tire went flat. I called my dad to help cause I was only 10 miles out and he said, uh, but dog, the bounty hunter is on yeah. <laughs> and he made you change your tire on the side of the road it was by that yourself. Stinging snow that hits the side of your face and it just, it was blistering cold and this nice man pulls over and I'm like I'm gonna risk it I'm gonna risk being taken on Thanksgiving because I need needed help but I've changed mine like 10 times what could you offer people I could probably teach them how to survive a rip current I was how? taught I'm when interested. I was how, yeah how, how? so what you want to do is you want to be closer to the ocean floor so normally a rip current will start about 15 feet out if it's a really strong one that's why they say beware of the undertow so what you want to do is just really like hover breast to sea floor and swim as hard as you can because as the rip current is pulling out on top it will push you back in (laughs) is that for real yes like this is a real how could i possibly make that up i I know i'm a good liar but that was like brilliant so if I feel like I'm getting pulled under by a rip current, now this only works in the ocean. Is this a, a, a what? <laughs> I can't believe that's the only thing I could offer people. <laughs> I could teach you how to budget. I'm, a, I'm one hell of a budgeter. We're almost the most landlocked position in the world right <laughs> now, know. by the way. So uh, I convinced myself I was having fresh fish yesterday when I got sushi. I was like, hmm, this is like caught today. Not even close. Nope. That had to be five weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting, though. I've never thought about that. So the current is so saved your life. So your goal again, if you feel you're getting in the ocean, yeah. getting pulled into a current, get as close to the sea floor, the ocean floor as you can. Yes. And you'll feel it. You'll feel the top pulling and the bottom will be pushing. This is great. You are welcome. I like that so much better than my juggling. No so doubt. What, do you, uh, <laughs> what, what could you, if you, if we just brought everybody together this morning and we had a giant auditorium. And you had to stand up and teach us something that would be a great life lesson. Yeah. It would be what? What could you what could you give us? Right when you thought your five-year-old was spectacular, better than any other kid out there, then Olivia Rodrigo comes along. Radio Paparazzi. Olivia released an early Christmas present for all of her fans on Friday. It's a full version of, it's called The Bells, but she spelled it when she was five, B-E-L-S. And this is her when she was five. That was when she was five. Yeah. Uh, There's still two minutes left of that song. It was a full, fully produced song for the world. Just wanted to let you know how untalented you are this morning. Yeah. Nick Cannon, he said in a new episode of The Checkup, 
And uh, this is where all these celebs are going to really like God. Uh, they just open their heart up and, and tell all their deepest, darkest secrets. Um, he's talking about being a dad of 11 kids and feeling guilt. Obviously, being a, uh, a father of multiple kids, it's always you know, the biggest guilt on, on me. It's like I don't get a get to spend enough time with all of my children. One, because I'm constantly working and two, it's just to spread thin. I don't understand how you even remember the names of all your kids when you have 11 and they're in four or five different states and stuff like that. Like that, to me, I, I, I can't and we remember. Got tw- we got number 12 coming in 90 days. I don't remember 11 people from my kids' hockey team. I don't know how I'd remember 11 of my own kids. Yeah, I think he remembers, but it's the fact that he doesn't get to bond with them. Yeah, he name- could buy you a ton of stuff, but I mean, man. He should have named them all Nick. It would have been the easiest. Yeah. Nick, Nick 1, Nick one, 2, Nick two, 3. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have done. Uh, Dionne Warwick, she was on with Jennifer Hudson, and she. I think everybody in Hollywood has a Leo DiCaprio story. What about Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, he's a cutie. He is cute. He really is. No, I met him at a benefit affair, but he didn't have eyes on me. He had eyes on my granddaughter. Oh. So I had to get him to understand. Mm-mm. Don't come over here with that. <laughs> Hands off. I got to Google that interview because doesn't she sound her age now? She oh, hasn't for a long time. she got that old smoker and, voice going on. And now she does. Blowing up the candles today. Paulina Gretzky, I think, is she still your... Background She's all right. There's nothing favorite. wrong with what God gave us there. 34. Warren Sapp is 50. And this one is crazy. Alyssa Milano is 50 today. Let's begin now. Let's go. I got December 19th on the calendar in the Playhouse all over the radio. You feeling the vibe? Are you feeling the spirit of the season, Cat? I really am. It's taken over my whole body. I'm feeling it in places that I can show you later. But mm. it was um, it was a whirlwind of a weekend. Yeah. I just. Give me a highlighter, too. A highlighter, too. Uh, got to experience a beautiful wedding, and um, it was just so tastefully done. Like, that's how a wedding should be, you know? Whatever. You're going to do potluck at your wedding. That's fine. But this one was primo. And then had my family Christmas, so that was awesome. And uh, I just made chicken wings. Like, kept it really simple. Yeah. Chicken wings. We had, like, a cheese spread. Like, a ton of fruit. Probably could have scaled back on the fruit. And a lot of sweets. And then yesterday, we were in Buffalo at the high school for Liam's tournament. And it was insane. It was like one of those buzzer beater type of games. But we went into overtime. And they did this play where they had four boys line up. And they had Crosby taking it out. And we had four seconds on the clock. Okay. And so we have Cam sprint down to the end. Crosby hail marries it. Cam grabs it, puts it up, puts us ahead. Then two minutes on the clock. Now we're tied up, okay? And two minutes on the clock, Liam, all ball, smacks it out of this kid's hand. They think he he fouled it. I got it on video, all ball, okay? But they're like, let's stick this kid on the line. He gets three. And then he misses the shot. My kid celebrates too loudly. So he gets to shoot two more, even no. though even though it wouldn't make a difference. Right. But it was like, it was such a crazy, and it was all caught on tape, and it was so cool. It's like exactly how you want a game right to be. Yeah. It'll be fun for those guys to look back on that in a oh few years. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's very so cool. fun. Uh, uh, I got you? To, uh, I got to celebrate uh, Christmas at my sister's. First time I'd been to her new place, and it was really, really fun. They Is it bigger great- than yours? Because oh, you know she wants yeah, that. Sure. Okay. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and and it was cool. Just it was a chill. It was, it was different because we had to bounce out. Of her place early in the afternoon because Nolan had a hockey game in Andover. So we went down there really early in the morning and then we had some chili and a couple of mimosas. Ooh, and it yum. was just, it was a fun, fun, cool, chill time. And uh, and throughout the weekend was just fun. Went to the uh, the Boyk uh, Memorial Service on Saturday. Not a dry eye in the house. It was it was crazy how many times you catch yourself just getting emotional and seeing, uh, you know, a young life get cut down so early and, yeah. and the strength of his family and the community and stuff like that. So that was kind of heartwarming and tough this time of the year. So I had so much to do on Friday before I had to shower and get ready for this wedding that started at three o'clock. And I had to go run to Target because I would have no time between then and then my holiday party for my family. So I'm like, I got to get this done. Had to run there and get my niece her bath toys. That's what I guess she wanted. And so I'm looking all around. No kid wants those, by the way. She can't talk. So her parents talk for her. And so I put my phone down in that aisle and I'm kind of like looking through stuff. And I found that. And then I see some 
cute bathrobes down the aisle. So I go down there and then I'm like walking around for probably 20 more minutes. And then I go to Starbucks and then I go to grab my phone because I had to text somebody. Oh, and it's gone. It's gone. I left it. I had to retrace my steps. I go back. It's not there. Okay. Are you running down the aisle or are you calm at this point? I'm walking very fast. And then I have this face like, yeah, yeah. yeah. People know they get (gasps) the hell out of the way. Yes. And so I am like, I'm pretty sure I put it down right here and I'm looking around. I couldn't find it. And it's the same target that I lost it at another time, like three years ago. And somebody had returned it to the fitting rooms. I don't know why you'd do that because I left it in the bathroom in the back of Target and they returned it to the fitting rooms. They probably just found the closest employee. But then the people at the fitting rooms kept it for 45 minutes, even though people were being radioed like, hey, we're looking for trying to track down a phone. They were rifling through it. They were looking at your Probably, whatever. And thank God I don't take photos like that. But I had like text conversations and like... They should not have been For the record, seen. anybody in any position <laughs> has had a text conversation with a close personal friend yes. or mate that is probably not intended for the public to see. Yeah. It well, doesn't make you a bad person. this is a between me and my sister and my brother, my younger brother, and she's like telling us this stuff about uh, private her matters, house, I'm her sure. house, whatever. And I, all I could think about, because it was the last text that I exchanged, that if somebody looks in my text, there's a there's like video stuff. And I'm just like, that's all I could think about, you know. And so finally, after a half hour, somebody walks it up and they had been shopping. It was in their cart and they had been to, they had to pick up a couple more things around the store before returning it to customer service. Thank God. So they you're did. waiting at customer service for someone to bring your phone yes. back up there. And then it was this woman. She had two kids with her. And she was like, hi, I found this by the baby stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. How did, does it. anybody ask you to kind of prove that it's yours at all? Or they just um, assume it's yours and they give it back to you? I think they assume. because, hmm. But, I mean, it's very easy to tell. And I don't have a code. I don't have face recognition. I know. I don't know I'm why. For God, punishment. you are such a... It's just one more step in my life that I don't want to take. The face recognition is the easiest because you're already looking at your phone. I know, but I look like Jekyll and Hyde. Like some days when I do my makeup, I'm like, there she is. The, uh, and the new iPhones actually have a like, setting oh. where you can have a you can have your mask on. It, oh, really? Yeah. Well, I remember when I got this phone, it had you could set up the face recognition so it could uh, recognize you even with your mask on. So that the eye is that. Yeah, yeah, but I think they they make you take one with the mask on too. You know what I mean? And Weird. then your regular That's- face too, but. Uh, I was thinking about this when you were talking about it earlier. Like, what would I be the most wigged out about as far as like if somebody was, because I have Apple Pay on my phone and I I use it. I never, guys, I never, number one, I never have cash. It's been, it's been 20 years since I've carried cash. Unless I'm going to go gamble, like I'm going to go shoe pool or something like that. Yeah. I have no cash on me. And uh, I pay with almost, I go to places when I know that they have Apple Pay because my phone is always in my pocket and I can walk up and I can double click the bar and I can tap it. And yeah. if you know how to use Apple Pay on a phone, you can use it almost anywhere. That's what I would be the most wigged out about. I would have to call my wife and I have to say, you got to cancel all the credit cards. So you said you gone. have face recognition on your phone yeah. or do you have a, you have a password? Yeah, too? no, I both. Yeah, both. both. But you don't need to use both. You just I'd use be really worried if I had Apple Pay. That'd be really scary. That's the biggest thing. If I lose my phone and uh, and somebody decides they're going to start racking up. so Or yeah. if I lose it within like that 45 seconds or they figure out a way to get in it. I mean, who doesn't have one touch purchasing on Amazon right now? Yeah. Everybody does. Uh, I want, yeah. So that's one thing that you're nervous about. I was worried about a text conversation with my sister and my brother, but I want to know what is the first thing you start to think about? Maybe you are somebody that likes to send some morning nudes to your husband. I don't know what your life is like. I wouldn't suggest that in case you're in this position. Hey, but whatever works for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not encouraging it because I'm not discouraging it. Pimply little high schooler is going to find it and send it out to the world. So, okay, let's so let's set up the scenario. If you lost your phone in our studio right now, you came here, you picked up a prize, and you left your phone at the front desk. And Cindy said, "Guys, somebody left their phone here." Yeah. What would be the thing you are most nervous for us to see on your phone? If you lost your phone for how many total minutes? I would say it was over 30, last thing I needed. It was like one of those days where you just squeak in an errand or two, and then you're like, this is the last thing I needed. 
And I just like when I found out that she had found it like minutes earlier and still had to go down a couple of aisles to get some stuff. I'm like, Ugh. you have a droid because you're uh, uh, you haven't quite evolved yet. And wow. do you have a find my phone feature on that? Like if it was. Imagine you thought it was gone for like an hour and a half. You didn't know if it was in your car. Maybe it was at home. It was at work. It was at Target where you really lost it. Would you have any way of tracking that at all? I wouldn't, but like how would I even do that if I don't have my phone and I'm at Target? Okay, so for for me, yeah, like our family, my kids' laptops, my AirPods, my wife's pods, my kids' pods, all their phones are all synced together right, on one works. Apple account so yeah. we know where everything is. So that's how you would do it if you had evolved. So how would you do it? Well, you'd, uh, you'd, like call, you you'd, call, you'd call Derek and say, hey, can you find my on phone? My on, find my, on his find my phone. On his phone. So I, I use someone else's phone to call my husband. To have oh, him you find use the phone. front desk. Cripes. <sighs> Either way, she kept it for too long is what I was saying. But the only thing, like, what there has to be one thing immediately that comes to mind where you're like, if somebody opens his phone. You got nothing true. on there, like you and your underwear or nothing? No. I do, like I told you, I have that, that ear infection photo that I had to send to Center Care, where it's like <laughs> the <laughs> online, send us a photo of your ailment, and then it's like... <laughs> and that could be construed as probably anything <laughs> if you like, look at the, the inner ear. What that? <laughs> <laughs> Katie texted and said, I do send risque photos, cat, to my husband. He's a trucker, and I like to spice up his drive. He says he deletes them. Girl, he does not delete them. There's no way. He's showing those to every guy. He's like, you go. The next loves he stops at, he's like, you guys want to see my wife? I yeah. guarantee that's happening. Uh, Tim says, I have a folder on my phone. Front screen labeled passwords. I'm dyslexic and have always oh. needed help remembering. Okay, you need to relabel that. Label it like work stuff or something boring or like laundry list or something like that. Get at the store. Or have that. Like that yeah. Oh, man. Dominique, how are we feeling today? Pretty good. How are you guys? Good. Glad to have you on the show. If we were to, let's say you came here, you picked up a prize and you accidentally left your phone here and we went, oh, let's look in here. What, what would you be afraid we'd find? Okay, first, I would be, and this is me, I have tonsillitis. Okay. And I, I'm still a call your mom for any situation type of kid. So okay. I took a bunch of videos of the inside of my mouth with, like, just <laughs> and stuff. And yeah. if somebody sees that without the background information, they were like, this girl's got a, a, a doctor. She kinky. She didn't meet her. You just, just like, it'll probably take you an STD or something. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> it's just because I have really bad tonsils. Don't think of me that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, why didn't you delete it? You've already like sent yeah. it and got the the prescription. Because well, it stays in the send folder, right? Yeah, it just oh, stays okay. in my phone. Like, and I, it does. It's something that's chronic, so it comes. But I haven't gotten my tonsil taken out, and because oh, it's not something that happens. All the time, I keep the video because I don't know all the time of it. Yeah. So a sore throat is like something that happens with a cold. So you're telling food. me in oh. today's day and age, the thing you're most concerned about if we find your phone is that we're going to misconstrue a video of you having tonsillitis for an STD. That's what you're most concerned about? Hey, if you have sisters and brothers like I have, <laughs> oh, anything is evidence. Man, even my mom's bad. She's just like, I mean, that's from kissing all their boys. And I'm like, no, it's not. Mom, stop it. <laughs> it sounds stop like it. you never have a dull thing going on. Ever. My yeah. life's always a movie. Love it. I'm glad you could share part of it with us. Happy holidays. Radio paparazzi. We're going to start with Tom Cruise. He is such a daredevil, and he is on the outside of a plane, and he just wants to send this message to everyone. Thank you for supporting Top Gun Mavericks. And only thank you for allowing us to entertain you. <laughs> I'm really out of altitude. You have a very safe and happy holiday. We'll see you at the movies. I mean, he just fell out of that plane like he was taking a shower. Like it was something he does and every he's like day. he's 60 years old, too. It was he's crazy. in amazing shape and he just keeps doing this stuff. It's just. Yeah. Makes me sad. So I thought that he was amazing. And then I hear about Kate Winslet and watched the video myself this morning of her setting the record of holding her breath while she was filming Avatar. Uh, Beat Tom Cruise's record, by the way. His was six minutes on the set of Mission Impossible. Hers was 7.15. I haven't heard from Tom. Poor Tom. He's. I mean, I don't know Tom at all. I've never met him in my life. But I'm sure he's getting very fed up of hearing this story of how I broke his, (laughs) his record. Yeah, I loved it, though. I mean... 
I loved breath holding. I loved learning how to do it. I was amazed at how good I was at it and how I just kept getting better. And it was an amazing experience, something I'd always wanted to do in my life. And to get to do it for work, I was like, unbelievable. Some girls are clearly better than others. Yes. <laughs> You've known none of them. <laughs> But it, to watch her do this Seven underwater. Seven minutes to hold your breath is a long time. It teaches, they taught her how to um, send her oxygen other places in her body. And just like she was zoned out. And then they finally like tapped her on the head. They're like, come on up. All right. Two things. One, <laughs> shut up. Rihanna is on TikTok. So exciting. Uh, but number two, we got to see her new baby boy. Yeah. Oh. The audio doesn't do it justice, guys. The kid's really pretty cute. The kid is adorable. (laughs) And uh, obviously the dad is ASAP Rocky. But you made made some sense saying she got on TikTok because the Super Bowl. It's all leading up to that. It's going to all do that. She will be so in your social media feed. At least 36 people were injured following what's been described as sudden turbulence. Um, It was on a Hawaiian Airlines flight from Phoenix to Honolulu. I'm telling you. If this were even slight turbulence gets me, like, my mind goes to dark places, but I guess it's a very rare event. Also grateful uh, that it seems at this moment that none of those guests that were transported to hospital are in critical condition. Uh, and so we, we certainly hope that they will make a speedy recovery. The God. seatbelt sign was on at the time that the incident occurred. Um, <laughs> and um, we're obviously in a, a situation in, in the islands right now where we're dealing with a lot of unstable air and, and weather conditions. I wonder, that's a billion dollar idea by the way what? find a way to predict that turbulence is ahead like send a plane you know, like, ahead no well no but i mean they know like they can t- they can tell you. you've been on flights where they're like uh ladies and gentlemen put your seatbelts on again yeah. we're expecting a little bit of turbulence but sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't but if you could really kind of anticipate where the big stuff is going to be right that's a billion dollar idea right there i know a few pilots and they're always like listen it's not that big of a deal because we expect it we know how to get through it but i mean when you're just a traveler you don't know and you have hey. kids and you don't have a will set when I'm 90 minutes into Moneyball, yeah. I don't want it, all right? I don't I'm want just it. minding my own business. Man, this was crazy to see. A 260,000-gallon tank at Sea Life Saw Aquarium this. in Berlin was recently destroyed. So this thing has an elevator going through it, yeah. by the way. And it's a hotel, but then it's also Sea Life. But this, it was like 46 feet of tank. And it exploded. They say that maybe it was the cold weather outside that had a crack in the pipe. And then it just sent... You know, every yet, it, yeah. Oh my god, I can't even imagine. But they said like ninety eight percent of the sea life was dead. Well, yeah, I mean they're so, not going to survive. No, uh, that's very. It, but police are still investigating. But whatever. All right. So this guy pays back this woman's kindness. You never know what somebody has in store for you if you do give. Do you have a dollar by any chance to help me get this brace? No. Get the brace. Are you sure? Oh yeah. Why'd you help me? Because I'm in pain. I have a chronic pain condition. I want you to have that brace. Thank you so much. We're giving the four dollars back. What is it for you? This is a test of kindness. Oh no! Yeah. I want you to get the brace. The brace is actually for you. It's a thousand dollars. Oh no no no! I will pay it forward. Thank you so much. You're an amazing individual. So you thank you. Are. Wow. What a sweet woman. Do you hear the beginning of that and her crotchety husband? Yeah. No. No. Do you have a dollar by any chance to help me get this brace? No. Get no. Bra- <laughs> you better not get one cent of that $1,000. She better go do something nice for herself. The Playhouse Podcast is made possible thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Catch the live show weekdays from 530 to 9 on 1047 KCLD. Now, share this with a friend.